In this video, we will solve a few integrals using integration by parts. Example 1, we have to find out the integral of the product x square ln of x. If we choose x square as u, then we take its differential and become simpler. But if we choose ln of x dx as differential of v, we have to ask the question, do we know how to integrate it? At least not yet and it is not that simple. So here we will have to choose u as ln of x and dv as x square dx. I can also rewrite this integral to show u and dv in the integral itself. I can rewrite it as ln of x x square dx. Then ln of x is u and x square dx is dv. So let's find the differential of ln of x which is dx over x and the integral of x square is x cube over 3. Now let's put all this in the formula for integration by parts. The product u times v which gives us ln of x times x cube over 3 minus the integral v du x cube over 3 times du which is dx over x. This simplifies to x square over 3 and we know how to integrate x square. So the final result is example 2 integrate ln of x. We can choose u as ln of x because we know its differential and dv would just be equal to dx. Let's write it here. u is ln of x and if you want we can write dv as just a constant 1 multiplied by dx. We take the differential of ln of x which is dx over x and integral of 1 dx is just x. Let's put all this in the formula here. So the product u times v, x times ln of x, minus the integral v, which is x, du, dx over x. We see the second integral becomes more simple. So we have x ln of x minus the integral dx which gives us x ln of x minus x plus c. So now in our list of formulas, we can add the integral of natural log of x, which is x ln of x minus x. Example 3, we have to find out the integral of the product t square et. For the choice of u and dv, let's choose u as t square because when we will take the differential it will become simpler and we know the integral of et. So this part is u and that is dv. Let's write it here u is t square and dv is et dt. Take the differential of u which gives us 2t dt and the integral gives us just et. Let's put it in the formula product u times v gives us t square et minus the integral of v with respect to du gives us e to the t 2 times t dt. Let's focus on the second integral. Let me rewrite it as 2 integral of t et dt. Now focus on this integral. How can we solve this? U substitution or any other methods won't work and if you see the form of this integral it's very similar to what we started with. We started with t square et and now we have t et. In fact it has become simpler by decreasing the power of t. So we can solve it by again applying integration by parts. Here let's choose u to be t and et dt as dv. Let's write this choice of u and dv for the new integral here. Don't confuse it with u and dv for the previous part. So now u is t and dv is et dt. Differential of t gives us just dt 
and this integral gives us just et. I am keeping the first term here. So t square et is coming from the previous part and now we integrate this one using integration by parts. So minus 2, let's put square brackets here. Now the product u times v which is t et minus the integral v du integral of v dt so e to the t dt and this integral we know is easy to solve so the final answer is t square e to the t minus 2t e to the t plus 2e to the t plus c be careful with distributing this negative 2 Example 4, integrate the product of e to the x and sin x. Let's choose e to the x as u and dv as sin x dx. Let's write it here, e to the x, and its differential would be e to the x dx. I have been emphasizing that choose u so that when you take its differential, it becomes simpler. Right now it's not becoming simpler, but it's not becoming complicated either. We could have chosen sin x as du and that would have also worked. But let's continue with this choice for now. So dv is sine of x and its integral gives us negative cosine x. Applying into the formula of integration by parts, the product uv gives us negative e to the x cosine x minus the integral v du which gives us e to the x cosine x and because of this minus sign here we change it to plus. Let's focus on this integral now. Is it any simpler than the integral that we started with? Let's compare the form of the two integrals. First one was e to the x multiplied by a trig function and this one is also e to the x multiplied by some other trig function. The form is same. So perhaps we need to apply integration by parts on this again. Let's choose this as u, e to the x as u and cosine x dx this time as dv. Let me write these choices here. u is e to the x and dv is cosine x dx. Differential of ex just gives us ex dx and integrating cosine x gives us sine x. Keeping this first term as it is because it's coming from the original integral. So negative e to the x cosine x plus u times v the product of e to the x sine x e to the x sine x minus integral of v du which is integral of e to the x sine x dx. What do we see here? This is actually the integral that we started with e to the x sine of x. So all this process of integration by parts twice, is it any useful? Well, if we write the original integral and represent it by i, so algebraically i is equal to the sum of these three terms. This quantity negative e to the x cosine x plus the second quantity e to the x sine x minus i again. We actually have to solve for i in this equation. Let me rewrite it as i equals negative e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x minus i. I have to solve this equation for i so this is an algebraic problem. Take this quantity negative i to the other side. It becomes 2i equals to the sum of these two. Finally i becomes equal to e to the x sine x minus cosine x whole divided by 2. And i was the original integral. So we can write that the integral of e to the x sine x is this whole quantity. Focus on this minus sign here. If this was plus, 
then i and i on both sides of the equation would have cancelled and it would be telling us that the sum of two quantities equal to zero which may or may not be correct but at least it won't give us the integral that we are looking for you will see some other problems where you start with an integral and apply integration by parts twice and then you end up with the same integral on one side after that you have to do some algebra to isolate that integral